the outlaw gangs that spread violence and terror through the Southwest were loosely organized and led by ignorant, undisciplined men. One desperate gang, however, operated with deadly modern efficiency until a quiet, unassuming man appeared among them. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. With the death of the notorious Bill Doolan and the scattering of his outlaw gang, people in the West breathed easier, but not for long. Bitter Creek Newcomb and Red Buck Waitman, who had ridden with Doolan, rallied the remnants of his gang, robbing banks, holding up trains, raiding towns, and then disappearing into the wilderness without a trace. On that day in August, 1896, when I left Rising Springs on my first vacation in four years, I wasn't concerned about the Bitter Creek Gang. I was going to visit my friend Nat Faber in Gila Bend. Proceeding west from Tucson, the stage was crowded. One passenger had to sit with the driver. I didn't know the man. I'd only caught a glimpse of him when he boarded the stage in Tucson. But he was going to wreck my vacation. Check your passengers. All right, folks, step out. What's this all about? I'll tell you later. Nothing to be afraid of, folks. I'm Sheriff of Casa Grande. You a doctor? Uh, yes, I am. I thought so. You're under arrest. Under arrest? What for? Now, uh, come off of it, Doc. Sheriff in Tucson traced you to the stage depot, then wired ahead. Who am I supposed to be? Your name's Nixon. You escaped from Ohio State Prison last month. My name is Baxter. Now, don't hand me that, Doc. Bitter Creek Newcomb arranged your jail break and offered you 300 a month to work for him. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm Dr. Baxter from Rising Springs. That's the truth, Sheriff. He's from Rising Springs. Are you sure? Yeah, positive. All right. Line up over there. The rest of you passengers will have to identify yourself. All right, you up there. Nixon, all right. Ride back and fetch that other doctor. It's a good thing he had bandage and medicine in his briefcase. How long will he be unconscious, Doc? It's hard to say, but his concussion's not too serious. All right, boys. Get him on a horse. <clears throat> Doc? I wish you'd take a look at this letter we found in his pocket. Does it concern me? Well, it might. It was addressed to Dr. Lewis Nixon. He was to go to the Red Slipper in Gila Bend, order a drink, take a ring from his finger, and place it beside his glass. Now, this don't make sense. Well, we received a tip that Nixon's joined in the Bitter Creek Gang. They're going to pay him 300 a month. I see. Now, evidently, nobody in the gang knows Nixon by sight. So he's to identify himself by going through that rigmarole at the Red Slipper. I can understand why outlaws would want their own doctor, but why tell me about it? Well, you're a doctor, and you look something like him. Now, if you took his place... I'm a little bit ahead of you, Sheriff. The answer is no. Well, now, only a doctor could get away with a thing like that. 
All the doctors around here are too well known. I'm on my vacation. I'm going over to Castle Grand and go fishing with my old friend Nat Faber. Nat Faber? Yeah, you know him? Nat Faber and his wife were in the bank last Friday when Bitter Creek's gang held it up. They killed both of them. Both of them dead? Killing an unarmed man is bad enough. But when it comes to shooting down a woman, Faber's had a kid, too. Yeah, I know. If you'd take Nixon's place while I hold him here in jail, we might be able to catch up with these murdering skunks. Well, it was an idea. I'll do it. I kind of thought you might. The next day, wearing Nixon's clothes and carrying his briefcase, I headed for Gila Bend. The sheriff had sent word ahead, explaining the plan to Sheriff Jackson of Gila Bend and asking him to meet me outside of town. Sheriff Jackson? Yeah. I guess you're Dr. Baxter. My deputy, Jerry Seward. Holly. How did Fred talk you into this here brain stunt? Don't you think it'll work? I'd say the odds are 100 to 1 against it. Bitter Creek's the smartest outlaw in the country, and Red Buck is such a cold-blooded killer that even Doolin wouldn't have him. I know it. We've tried trailing people to his hideout before. Every time, we've walked right into an ambush. Maybe it'd be better then if nobody tried to follow me. Once I've located the hideout, I think I can slip away. All I can say is you're doing something I wouldn't want to do. Got everything you need? Yeah, Sheriff Taylor briefed me on Nixon's career, up to now. Then the only thing I can do is to wish you luck. You'll need plenty. Thanks. I'll get back to you in a couple days. I hope. Follow him to the Red Slipper and see who he meets there. We'll put a close watch on whoever it is from now on. Yes, sir. Stranger, what do you have? I'll have a straight shot. All right. Help yourself. Thank you. me a drink? Help yourself. Thanks. You better put that thing on. You'll lose it. It's there for a reason. Next thing, I guess you'll be telling me you're a doctor. How'd you guess? Younger than I expected. It'd be a pleasure having you around. Thanks. I gotta change my clothes. Meet me out back. Thanks for the drink, mister. he's pulling a job, Bid keeps his hideout guarded better than the U.S. men. Come on, Doc.
Bitter Creek's headquarters turned out to be an isolated, decaying ghost town surrounded by miles of desert. I'll go, boss. Never mind, I'll get it. Hello, sweetheart. I expected you yesterday. Doc Nixon was late. Howdy, Doc. I'm George Newcomb. Glad to know you. Mostly, they call me Bitter Creek. I'd have been here sooner, but the stagecoach wrecked over the other side of Casa Grande. Toby, take the horses around back. Okay, boss. Doc, you may not know it, but I'm building up the biggest, most powerful outlaw gang in all the world. I'm running it like an army. I'd like you to be my Surgeon General. Will you have a drink? No, thanks. Well, that's just as well. You got work to do. Red! Red! Red got a bullet in his shoulder in our last job. What are you on? The doctor's here. It's Dr. Nixon. Red Buck. He don't look like no doctor to me. I am. At least I was until they took my license away from me. That was in Toledo, wasn't it? Cleveland. See, you've been checking up on me. I check on everybody. I probably know more about you than you do yourself. That's possible. I'm gonna get the bullet out of this man. I'll need some boiling water to sterilize these instruments. Come on, Doc, I'll take you to the kitchen. There's something wrong with that feller. I don't like him. <laughs> you don't like anybody. Well, just the same, I'm gonna keep an eye on him. I was assigned a room in the hotel, one with shutters on the window that were solidly nailed up. And that night, after Pearl had left to return to Gila Bend, I decided to look around. I say it's too risky. Sure it's risky, but it'll be the biggest job we've ever worked on. It's no skin off my nose, because with my bum arm, I won't be riding on this job anyhow. Caught you, didn't I? Let go, you're breaking my arm. What's going on? I caught him listening at the door. Get this ape off of me and I'll explain. What's to explain? You're snooping and you got caught. Let him go. I wasn't snooping, I was just walking around. You were listening at the door. It's a good thing you had me watching him. Sure, I was listening. I heard voices and I got curious. Curiosity is a bad habit. What's the difference if I'm listening? I'm a member of the gang. But you ain't a member of the gang. What Red means is, unless a man rides with us, we don't tell him our plans ahead of time. I didn't know that. Until we can trust a man, we watch him like a hawk. I'm sorry I caused such a ruckus. Good night. In case you want anything, ask for it. There'll be a guard on duty all night. Thanks. It wasn't going to be as easy to slip away as I thought. I was worried. If I knocked the boards from the window, one of the gang was sure to hear. I'd have been even more worried had I known what was happening in Casa Grande. Finish your supper, then yeah. give us them dirty dishes. The next morning, Bitter Creek assembled his entire gang at the hotel. Even the guards had been recalled from their posts. Men, when you leave here, split up into small groups. We'll attract less attention that way. We'll meet at the railroad tracks, the other side of Latigo Canyon. You're going to rob another train. Yeah, that's right. The Southwest is running a special. Over half a million in gold. Move out. You fellas wait. Can I go with you? No, you stay here with Red Buck and the Doc. Doc, this is a big job. Chances are some of the boys might get hurt. Be ready to take care of them when they get back. I'll be here. Sorry you won't be going, Red Buck. You might as well not ride while that shoulder's bad. Good luck, Bit, and be careful. Always am.
Dole, let's have a snore. You too, Doc. I'm not thirsty. Oh, yes, you are. Come on, Doc. Yeah, it's good for your liver. You better put that ring back on, mister. You're gonna get yourself in trouble. Yeah, miss, I want to talk to you. Somebody came through here yesterday and put a ring on the table just the way I did, didn't they? Maybe. Whoever it was was a phony. I'm Doc Dixon. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't be coy. Look, they jailed me in Casa Grande and took my clothes and my papers. Whoever the other guy was was a spy. How do I know you're not a spy? If I was, would I show up a day after the real guy came through? No. I... I guess you wouldn't. Where is he? He's at the hideout. Yeah, meet me out back. Jackson 8. Thank you, Doc. I come here checking out. I think I'll get a little shut eye. Suit yourself. You know, I never did trust that bird. He did all right for me. think you're going? I'm out of chloroform. Figured I might need some when the boys got back. You thought you'd ride into town and get some? That's the general idea, yeah. If you'd have been on the level, you'd have checked with me first. Get off of that horse and come on up here. I'm going to lock you in your room till Bitter Creek gets back. Rest your horses. The train's on time. Do it 438. Listen. about you and I was right. You'll have to admit it is worth a try. Hey, you two do look a lot alike. Yeah, the only difference is that you'll be alive tomorrow. Take him downstairs.
All right, throw those guns over here. Come on, throw them over! Shoulder, Doc. Well, it's not bleeding too bad. I'll take care of you later. Boy, you saved my life. Did you follow me out here? We've been watching Pearl. This time I had orders to follow her. Keep your eye on her while I take a look at Red. He's dead. I can't say I'm sorry. I gotta get to town and warn Jackson about that train holdup. Stay here and keep your gun on them. You feel up to it? It'll be a pleasure. I'll send somebody back to help you. Bring the wagon out of the brush after we start unloading the gold. Take your station. Sheriff Jackson! Bitter Creek and his gang are gonna hold up the Southwest Special, the one carrying the gold. Where? Over Belitigo Canyon. Get as many men as you can. Tell them to meet down at the depot. If we commandeer an engine, we may be able to get there in time. Come on! They should be right around that bend, Doc. Hurry it up. See you at that from the wagon. Doc. There they are. All right, everybody up, over the bank. Take cover. Doc, I owe you an apology. How's that? Well, the other day I said the odds were 100 to 1 against you. <laughs> if I'd have seen you in action, the odds would have been the other way around. Hadn't been for Jerry here, your first bet would have been right. <laughs> All I did was get myself shot. How's it coming? It's just like the devil. It's beginning to heal. Well, goodbye, Sheriff. Don't take any chances on Bitter Creek in that outfit. They're a tough bunch. Don't worry, Doc. We have them under double guard. Goodbye, Doctor. Are you sure you won't take even part of your reward? Nat Faber's daughter needs it a lot worse than I do. So long. So long, Doc. Nixon, Pearl, Dobie, and the other members of the gang were tried September 12, 1896, and sent to prison.
Two weeks before the trial, Bitter Creek broke out of jail, only to be killed by lawmen a month later. It was the end of the Bitter Creek gang and also the end of my restful vacation.